With me today, I have the Indian Chieftain Dark Horse and the Indian Challenger, and we are gonna talk about the differences between the two bikes so you can decide which is the right ride for you. Hey y'all, I'm taking some time here to talk to you about two bikes that a lot of you have asked me questions about, and they're two really incredible bikes put out by Indian Motorcycle, and that is the Indian Challenger, which is brand new for 2020. and of course, the Indian Chieftains, both of them in the Dark Horse format. are two bikes that I had in my garage so there are some differences one's a 19 and one's a 20 so a quick disclaimer this isn't an identical or an exact fair comparison another thing to mention is some mods that have been done to this chieftain whereas my challenger is still 100% stock the most notable thing probably the 116 kit in this you can get it factory 116 in 2020 but in the 2019 model it only came with a 111 and this 116 kit made all the difference in the world to this motorcycle. Another thing worth mentioning is I do have the exhaust from Indian on this bike as well. And of course the high flow intake that I got from my boy uh, John Shope over there at Dirty Bird Concepts. The last real upgrade worth mentioning affects comfort and that is the handlebars. Again, I've got some mini apes here. Also by my boy John Shope over there at Dirty Bird. Now before we go any further, I'm just gonna tell you kind of some of my opinions and my thoughts. The major differences between these two bikes is going to be handlebar mounted fairing versus the fixed fairing. And what that really means to you is this fairing is actually mounted on the handlebars. So as I turn my handlebars, the fairing turns with them. And that also means when wind is blowing on this fairing, maybe passing a semi, you're gonna feel that same type of vibration into your handlebars. One of the things people love about this style bike on the Challenger is a frame mounted fairing. That means this fairing is mounted directly to the chassis. So when you're passing semis or anything like that, that wind gets transferred from this fairing to the chassis down to the ground. You don't feel it as much as your handlebars. And in high wind situations, it truly does make a big difference. My goodness, that's the most badass thing I've ever heard. So in the end of this video, I will give you my personal choice. One of these motorcycles is going to be leaving my garage. It will not be riding with me on my 2020 schedule. The one that's sticking with me might surprise you, but I'll explain exactly why. So without any further time, let me go into a few of the points that each of them shines in that I think you as a consumer may find interesting. So one category the Chieftain absolutely wins in is the weight. It's close, but it is lighter. 827 pounds for the Chieftain Dark Horse, where the Challenger is coming in at 831 pounds. Seat height might be something that's relevant to a lot of you. Again, the Chieftain's gonna take home the cake on that one. It is 25.6 inches, which is almost a full inch shorter or lower than that Challenger, which is 26.5 inches. Braking is a super important thing when it comes to motorcycling, probably more important than horsepower or really any other feature on the bike. And that is one place this Indian Challenger is going to shine. It has got a 320 millimeter front brake also, I think it's worth noting that it's made by Brembo, not Brembro, but I prefer Brembro, so I'm gonna say Brembro. It's got a Brembro <laughs> front brake, whereas the Chieftain has a 300 millimeter front end and the brake itself isn't Brembo. You can really see the difference when you're looking at the two brakes side by side. It's a pretty impressive difference and that isn't only for visuals, you can feel it on the road as well. Engines are a pretty major thing and this bike has got the newest engine out from Indian. It is the liquid-cooled Power Plus. 
and although its displacement is certainly smaller than the 116, it produces more horsepower, it produces more torque, and it's gonna run cooler because you've got a conveniently hidden radiator right here. So when it comes to performance, this motor is light years ahead of that motor, even with the upgrades. Another thing that's very nice about this bike is the touch screen and its location. Down low, it's kind of pushed towards you a little bit. The gauges are pushed back a little bit. This is a good configuration for riding down the road. Just makes it easy to get on and navigate while you're going down the road. You don't find yourself reaching for it or anything like that. The speakers up in here are bigger than the speakers in the fairing of the Chieftain. So it's definitely got an audio plus. With one caveat, I have the saddlebag speakers in the back, which help quite a bit, but I still think it's louder just having the bigger speakers up front for me when I'm going down the road. It might be a little bit different for a passenger. Another thing to mention is the storage. It has more storage than the Chieftain does up front, so you can keep things like your, uh, you know, your sunscreen or whatever else you might have in there. I also have, uh, you know, empty Jolly Ranchers, all the good stuff. So that's kind of a nice feature. You know, more storage is always good when you're going down the road. Whereas this is all you get for storage in the Indian. It's barely enough to keep your key. Maybe a pair of sunglasses, but not much more. Big drawback to the Chieftain. Both come with power windshields, which make a big difference in the wind. You can actually help control where that wind's hitting you on your helmet and really slow the buffeting down. I do like the style of this windshield better than the Chieftain. The Chieftain has a little bit of a mushroom on top. So I like this windshield better. Now this motorcycle also has a pretty close touch screen. So compared to each other, it's probably not that big of a difference. Where you're gonna see the real differences when you're comparing it to other models of fixed fairing bikes, like the Harley Davidson Road Glide. That screen is actually up behind the gauges and it just makes it a little bit more difficult to get to. Realistically, between these two bikes, the, the gauges are pretty similar. <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to talk to you all about overall styling. They have really two completely different looks. This one has a little bit more of a classic look. Indian used to have a big arch on the saddlebag but now they got the slam saddlebags i think that's pretty cool this has got the old school headdress does not light up but it's got the old classic kind of look to it i've got an upgraded headlight uh, vision x i got this from my friends over at zero 3d you can check them out zero 3d.com this will fit right into your harleys and your indians so i really like this upgraded headlight but it didn't come with such a nice headlight whereas challenge is coming with full leds built in it's got a really cool modern chief kind of headdress an LED light there, that's pretty nice. The rims got that sporty kind of red line and a few more spokes, whereas the Chieftain you can see has, you know, just a little bit more of a wide, thick style front rim. Maybe note is just the styling of the tank. This tank, it flows with the style of the bike, kind of fancy, if you will, kind of fast, kind of racer. Whereas the Chieftain has more of your classic teardrop Indian style tank. Not only do the tanks look different, but they also hold a different level of fuel. The only five and a half in the Chieftain, where you get a full six in the new Challenger. The front suspension is a big deal as well. An inverted front suspension. And guys are spending thousands of dollars to do this to their bikes in the aftermarket game. The new Challenger is coming with it factory. It's a little bit soft for sport riding, but this is like a touring bike, maybe a sport tour, a performance bagger, if you will. So I think you want a little bit softer for those highways. I think Indian nailed it and dialed that in just about perfectly. Both are on a mono shock cast aluminum frame, which I think is the only way to go on these touring bikes. And that mono shock under there is a Fox suspension. Although I do think companies like Legend and some other companies are making some aftermarket shocks for these bikes, but coming with a Fox from the factory, I also have to give Indian a kudos for that. And what you might be a little skeptical about, but probably is a good thing, at least I know my mind has been changed after a few thousand miles, features a Bosch six axis IMU. Indian state of the art smart lean technology an intuitive system that overcomes limitations of standard traction control and anti-lock braking systems. And it made a difference for me. I did notice it and it does work well. It's responsive, I, I have to give it to them. Price pointing is almost identical between these two motorcycles, so ultimately the decision is yours. Are you looking for the new technology performance bagger or are you looking for a little bit more of a classic air-cooled workhorse? Really, you can't go wrong with either bike. I love them both, I've got thousands of miles in the saddle of both bikes, they're both very comfortable. Without doubt, this has more power, better suspension and braking, along with more technology. But some of us don't want all that technology, we just want our motorcycle to bang down the road. Unfortunately, I had to make a decision. One of these bikes could not make it on my roster for my 2020 rides. My decision might shock you. I decided to get rid of the Indian Challenger and keep my Chieftain Dark Horse. 
I did a whole video on it. You can find the link up here. But the short of it is I want to provide more motorcycles to all of you throughout the year, more brands, more styles. And I already had a fixed fairing motorcycle. Having three touring motorcycles didn't make sense. And certainly having two fixed fairing motorcycles on my roster that competed in the American V-Twin space did not make sense. So in the end, I had to make a decision what was best for me and my channel. And I chose to keep my road glide, get rid of the Challenger, and then keep a handlebar fairing bagger as well. And that, my friends, is my Indian Chieftain Dark Horse. I, I love the bike, it's comfortable, it's fun to ride. That's my decision. If I had to choose between one, I'm not sure it would be the same if it was gonna be my only motorcycle, but given our channel, I had to decide what was best for a variety. And that, my friends, was my decision. So what will I be replacing that Challenger with? Y'all have to stay tuned to my channel if you want to keep up to date. Make sure you click that subscribe. And y'all, I know we're dealing with a lot of crazy stuff out there, but I want you to stay stubborn. We got our new stubborn t-shirts out, Stubborn by Adam Sandoval. Stay stubborn. And that's what I want to remind you all to do. Listen, we can't be out traveling these big ghost town tours, but we're going to try to keep you cool content like this coming. And if you want to show us some support, go ahead and go to my website, adamsandoval.com. Pick yourself up a Stay Stubborn t-shirt and let everybody know out there that you too are very stubborn.